Alright, so now on to Halloween 6. Probably one of the most, I don't know, least popular movies in the series. And I don't think I told you that before we watched it, Brandy. <laughs> um, no. It's... I mean, first of all, it's cut the two different versions, and Brandy and I watched the producer's cut, because it is a slightly better version. I don't care for the theatrical at all. But, um, there are parts of the producer's cut of Six that I do like. I like, obviously, Loomis, and we'll get more into that. But, yes. um, I, I like, I kind of liked bringing characters back to make it a little full circle, even though they weren't the original characters, I mean the original actors, and no, I'm not talking about Jamie, because <laughs> that's a whole discussion itself. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about, um, when, when the one scene in Halloween 1, I thought that was cool, that it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense, maybe he'd be Lewis's friend, I kind of like that, and I like the actor, I thought he did a good job, and then yeah. bringing Tommy back was kind of cool, um, even though Paul oh, Rudd yeah. pretty bad actor in this movie. Um, so, and, and I like the tone of it for the most part and I like the original music that you a lot so there's things that I like about this um, but of course there's things that sort of you know rub me the wrong way Danielle Harris not being brought back as Jamie being the biggest but I guess um, since it was the first time you saw it Brandy yeah. let me know your first impressions of this movie because I mean you 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 so far have liked all of the uh, sequels so far so yeah that we've watched so I'm curious I think I know but I'm curious <laughs> well I think that this one was the first one so far that has like more cons than pros <laughs> In my yeah. opinion, it has some pros, like you mentioned, like the pacing in the very beginning. Like it, it took, like I think you and I realized we had been watching for almost an hour, but we were like 50 minutes in and nothing really I know, gory or crazy had happened that. yet. Yeah, the pacing was really good. It just got really fucking weird towards the end for me, like the whole uh -huh. cult type thing and the whole like it really did. When you said Rosemary's Baby, and I've seen Rosemary's Baby, it's like a, a family favorite again. Like we all love that movie, so uh -huh. like, I'm very familiar with it. As soon as you said that, and then I figured out like what really happened in that scene, like what was it? It was implying. I'm like, whoa, this is really like weird. For it just didn't, and it wasn't necessarily like because okay. To put it in perspective, I I did think the whole like thing with. And we can go through different story points and whatever, but I am going to first talk about, like, the whole thing yeah. about Jamie being supposedly, I guess, impregnated by Michael. And my whole thing that with is, that... Yeah, in this version, that's the implication. Yeah. And I feel like, okay, it takes, like, a, a lot to, like, like offend me. It doesn't take a lot to gross me out. Like, I, I get grossed out by gory things all the time. But, like, to, like, actually, like, offend me and make me be like, oh, my God. Like, it, so it's not like it was, like... I was like totally like oh my god that's just wow how could they do that that's terrible it wasn't like that for me but it was just like why I just didn't it was confusing because I never saw first of all I never saw Michael in like a human regard like that like he would he, like for him to even right, be exactly. able to like do that to somebody I couldn't see it just because he's so bizarrely like supernatural and non-human and like to yeah just, so and, it was weird and like how yeah and I was have, like the urge to do that or like, it's weird to even talk exactly. about this. like I don't yeah. understand it yeah, yeah. I know and I, and I was saying um, after I explained that to you because it is pretty subtle they don't really outright say that's what happened but that's definitely what happened yeah. and um, I was saying I don't I can't just I mean the whole time when and again first of all Brandy had no idea that she assumed Jamie was in this movie but she had no idea that it was not Daniel Harris. And when I said yeah. that to her, it's sort of, that was the first thing that I knew you did not like. And I hate that too. That's my biggest fucking problem with this movie. That's just yeah, that was another the thing. Way they, the yeah. way they treated her like shit. But just like, and we were saying like, you can't really see that Jamie in quotes and think it's the same oh, yeah. Jamie from 4 and 5. Yeah. But going back to what you said about the whole implication yeah. Of what happened with the baby. Um, yeah. I just can't picture 
I can't picture Jamie from four and five. And maybe I don't want to picture that Jamie. Because she's so, yeah. How that yeah. happened. Yeah. And, um, I think, and just the way they treated her character, I didn't like at all. Um, yeah. This has been like a thing that I've thought of a lot since I've seen this movie more than you. Um, and it sort of goes back to what we were saying when we talked about five, the way they killed off Rachel so soon. And we were saying, well, yeah. why didn't they just have her die where Tina died? It would have been a more earned death and it wouldn't mm-hmm. have been a good place for her to die defending Jamie. She just died for her. Yeah. In my mind, I always thought, and it sort of would have solved all the problems with Daniel Harris because, you know, they didn't want to pay her um, so much money. And it's not even so much money. They they said to her, like, oh, your character dies in the first act, basically. You're a piece of shit. We're not paying you any more money. Wow. But, uh, despite the fact that she was in two other movies. Um, but... But no, I was I was thinking like in my own head a way to easily fix that. Similar with Rachel, like we said, she should have survived till the end. Instead of saying st- instead of in the producer's cut, Jamie getting shot in the head, she could have in the hospital. She could have disappeared. And I thought of this once too. It would have been a cool callback. Have like Michael show up and start stabbing the bed sheets. Like in two, oh, he yeah. Lori's in the bed. He yeah. pulls it off, and she's gone. She's just gone until the end of the movie, and she shows up and she saves everybody. And that would have been a good end for her. And yeah. it, I mean, and I think it would have solved the Daniel Harris problems because, you know, she would have been in it longer. So yeah. they would have paid her what she was deserved. And the whole baby thing, I've had a problem with. Like, just get rid of the baby. Why is there a baby? And, the, and even in the movie, it's like. Even in the movie, like, they have to kill the baby because it's Michael's last bloodline. But yet somehow at the end, it seems like the whole thing is still, like, still happened, even though the baby's alive. Like, it transferred to Loomis, which made no sense, which, again, they had had Jamie survive and fight Michael and, you know die fighting him that would have made more sense so that was just my theory I wanted to throw out there that would have solved a lot of problems but yeah it was also yeah when you just brought that up about like the baby and the whole ending and it just it this was the first one where I was like genuinely confused at certain parts like to the point where I was like I know I was a little confused at the end of the fifth one obviously because that's when the first time we see the like cult type guy go in and break michael out yeah. and all that stuff so like i was a little bit confused and there there were bits and pieces i was confused about in you know that one but this one i was just like what the fuck is going on towards the end and like i did think that the whole I guess, i'm just gonna say cult because that's what it reminds me of like the whole cult idea with these people in robes that are all like like secretly in it well, they're this rune. Sp- yeah it's they're weird they're they're, uh, they're the cult of foreign officially so you're correct. Oh, okay, yeah. Calling it that. That's what yeah. I figured because it's like, but it it didn't give me like that whole thing was so bizarre to me, and it really did. I feel for me personally, like took away from the Halloween tone of all the other ones because the other ones were just Michael's evil. We don't really know why. It's this big mystery. He's just this killer. He doesn't really have 100% motives. He just does it, and he's psychotic. And in in this one, it was trying to like dig deeper, I guess, and like, oh well it comes from the rune and the stars aligned. It was like really it. deep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I don't like and that. And the shit that they just made up. Yeah. Because like I said, the the peop- the guy who wrote five or the people who made five sort of put that stuff in there having no idea what they were gonna do with it. And then they, they just hilarious. had to make something up it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Which is probably why like I think you said you were confused at the end of five, but I remember you saying like it wasn't like a bad confusion. You were like, like sort of intrigued, yeah. Intrigued as what these, what's going on? Who is that? What is this symbol? Um, but the execution of the stuff they were just handed for the people who did six was messed up. And um, yeah, I guess you can't going really off blame of that, them. <laughs> no, going off of that, there's a, 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 there's an interview with Daniel Harris on the Blu-ray set that I have where she talks about. Halloween 6 and being replaced and whatever and why that happened. And and it goes right to what you were saying, kind of. But she was saying that, you know, when she first got the script, she was, like, really confused. And she was like, wait, what? I'm I'm having Michael's baby. And there's all this (laughs) cult stuff. She she said, oh, she realized, she said that she realized, like, 
oh, these people don't know what Halloween is. This is not Halloween. This is yeah. Not at all. What? Yeah. So I thought it that is was true. That, I feel like the whole yeah. beginning of the movie, it, it kind of shifted like right when the climax was happening in the movie, where that's where yeah. it got really bizarre because, and weird. Yeah, like, the whole beginning whole... was fine. Yeah, it felt like it a Halloween fine. movie in the first half, and then like the last yeah. half, it was just got really weird, and it seems like they didn't know what direction they were going in, and it was just, I don't know, the whole ending sort of, I, I'm not going to say that it ruined the whole thing for me, because like I, this, I guess... <sighs> It's hard to explain, but I guess it could it could have been worse because I know there's going to be worse ones. And I've seen some of the Friday the 13th, like, for example, like sequels that are awful. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Nightmare on Elm Street. And they're just so bad and cheesy and B-movie. This could have been a lot yeah. worse. It wasn't like it was like that degree of bad, but it was still really bizarre and just didn't fit, I feel like, with the series. It still had Donald Pleasance, and I feel like that's like – a large chunk of the reason why I actually say that there is some hope for why I liked it. It's probably be all because uh -huh. of him. If he wasn't in it, I feel like I really probably would have had even bigger issues with it because it didn't have Daniel Harris. It didn't really have any other returning characters or anything familiar about it aside from like Loomis. So, I mean, it had returning characters, but not returning actors, which kind of, and then yeah, you said yeah. the guy that plays Michael, which is pretty cool that they brought him back from a from previous Hollywood movie, but or... yeah. But yeah. then why not just but, bring Daniel Harris back? <laughs> Stupid. I know. Well, they, I mean, I said this is the first studio film, you know, since Halloween 2, and it was mm -hmm. completely, not completely different people, because it still had the same producers, but then they had the studio producers, and those people just did not see the importance of Daniel Harris. They saw the importance of Donald Pleasance, the director, apparently. They did, but... Yeah. Um, but no, the studio side just saw Daniel Harris as a piece of shit, which really fucked with it. And like, like the uh, theatrical, the, the endings both happen at the same time. Like, Kara jumps out the window, it fades to black, and she wakes up just in a different place, I think. And that's yeah. where it all goes off the rails. But I feel like, again, like I said, if they had just had Jamie go missing, show up at the end, like, die fighting him or yeah. something... It would have been better, and it would have resolved the character better. Plus, you know, if they had a slightly better explanation for the, the tattoo, the thorn, the cult, oh, yeah. or whatever, you know, if they... I do agree that it's completely out of place, and it doesn't really fit. Yeah. Um, I think I said, I think I still... I still like it for what it is. It's certainly not one of my favorites, but I like it, I think I said, because... Like the produ I always say it theatrical, but the producer's cut came out just a few years ago, and I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like a semi-classic Halloween film that I'm seeing for the first time, like a few oh, years yeah. ago. Oh, yeah, so you have like after, a different like, feel with it, yeah. After Halloween, yeah. it was after those. It was kind of, it was, it was nice. Um, well, that's interesting but, that we have just the, the different perspectives in that regard, because to me it's like, following up the other ones I just seen, which were really, really strong and good. Like, you know, even though I had issues with the fifth one, like I definitely, I do think they're progressively getting worse, no, but that's weird because I do like the fourth one better than the second one, even though the second one was really good too. So from the fifth yeah. one, I guess like uh -huh. from the fourth to the fifth, it got a little bit eh. And then from the fifth to the sixth, it got even more eh. And then I'm sure it's just going to continue to get like that, yeah. especially because I know that Donald Pleasance will not be in the future ones, which really is really depressing because I know that they paid tribute to him at the end, sort of, which was nice. But that's sort of like, I guess we should talk about like the whole thing with the disrespect that like, that fucking asshole guy, like the, I guess it was the director showed Donald Pleasant, like thinking that he was like boring. And that's why a lot of Donald Pleasant scenes were cut from the yeah. theatrical one, I guess. Yeah. 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 Because, um, I mean, I said it to you, but just to reiterate, like they screened the producer's cut for an audience full of 14 year old boys. Literally. They <laughs> said it sucked. They said it was boring. Oh and then God. they went back in, cut in all this different shit, cut percent of Loomis' scenes, I'm pretty sure. And, yeah. uh, God, I can't wait for that one. Just the way it's, like, it's, how, it's over-sensationalized just to get 14-year-old boys at um <laughs> And, yeah, he said he was terrible. The director said boring and decided to cut him out of most of it. And it's like, how can you do that? And it made, it's made worse. It's just like, it was his last Halloween film. Yeah, and he died. I mean, died. the director didn't like, know that, but... Right. Fuck yeah. His last Halloween 
it was his last halt it was his last movie period and then both of the versions never get this a definitive ending because in this one you know the yeah. curse is passed him, so I think he's supposed to be the new man in black. Remember at the beginning, Lynn wants Loomis to come, like, Wynn is retiring, and Loomis, he wants Loomis to come take his place at Smith's Grove, and at the end, he ends up oh, taking yeah. his place as the man in black. And then, it just ends. Yeah. And then, I'll, I don't mind telling the theatrical ending of him, because it's really nothing. It ends the same way with them leaving in the car. He says he has to go back in to see something. And then it ends with a close-up on Michael's mask. And you hear Loomis scream. And that's mm-hmm. the ending. So no matter what, his last movie, I mean, the greatest character in the series, the greatest actor. Yeah, we don't get any closure. Him. That's Yeah, I would, no. almost ra- I would almost rather have had him, well, I don't know, because I don't want the character to actually die either, because he's great. But like, I would almost rather have had him have like, a dying sequence at the very end just because at least he would have some type of ending written I mean, for him. Yeah. I hate that. I don't like when they just have, yeah. maybe because they thought they were going to be able to make maybe one more, but maybe nobody knew how bad like his health was or whatever, which is really sad. Like, you know, that, that yeah. happened. Yeah. Like I'm sure nobody was obviously thinking that or planning on that happening. So maybe they assumed they were going to be able to make another movie with him in it and he was going to continue it, which would have been, Pretty interesting, I guess, to see how they would have made Loomis into, like, a bad guy if they were going to go that that route, which would have been weird, but maybe interesting. Yeah. But either way, it is kind of sad that he never did get his definitive ending. There's, like, no closure with the character, and that sucks. I know. And again, especially because he stayed with the series forever. And, I know. You know. He stayed with it until he died, and then, you know, never got that ending, Really I mean, I mean, I've said this about every single time we talk about Halloween movie. I think I've said this, and I probably sound like a broken record, but I don't care. I'm just gonna, keep, especially because this is the last one, so it's it's worth mentioning. Again. It's the last one that he's in. That he's definitely for me the best part of the Halloween franchise. I don't care what anybody says. Like the character, no the actor, everything about the Loomis no. thing is just great. So yeah. So it's going to be interesting now that that's like, it's like the closing of an era with those movies. And then now, now when we start the next one, I feel like we're almost going to be going into like a whole different thing. Cause like I said, like Loomis to me, like represents what Halloween like is. It's going to be so weird to have a Halloween movie without him, yeah. especially because Donald Pleasance like literally came back for all of them, which is awesome. I know. So it's going to be yeah. weird. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sad and, you know, I mean, like, they planned to kill him off with Halloween 2 and the explosion, then they didn't, and then they planned to kill him off in Halloween 5 when he collapses on top of Michael, and then they didn't, but I feel like at a certain point they just had to be like, okay, I feel like they were just using him maybe as, like, to make it seem authentic or, like, a cash grab or something, because they didn't want to write a definitive ending. Wow, yeah. They were open, which yeah. unfortunately does, did not work, because... He yeah. was so old, and, and then it just happened. Um, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, as far as the movie itself, I do completely understand and agree with pretty much most of what you said. I just, I think, like, I love the first hour-ish, because, like we said, it's very yeah. much like the original. Nothing really happens, but you have the atmosphere being built and the mood being set. Well, that's why I like, was really, really surprised happens. by the weird ending. Like, I didn't expect it to shift in such yeah. a non-Halloween yeah. feeling way. Like, it was so bizarre to me. I don't know. Yeah. But again, they were stuck with whatever they got in five, and those people didn't know what they were doing, so they just... Yeah. I guess they did the best thing. But, um... I don't know. I think I... I think somewhat fondly on this movie only because of that first... I think the first hour... Because it feels so classic. And yeah. it does, like you said, completely go off into territory that's not familiar with the series, which, you know, could have been done better. It could have been done well, I feel like, if they wanted to give an explanation of that stuff. Yeah. But it was random and weird. Yeah, it was like I said, like, it could have been a lot worse, but I feel like it also could have been a lot uh-huh. better with that being said. Like, it could have been a 
like it could have been just one of those terrible terrible sequels that i know we're going to eventually get to i just know but and it wasn't that far in that direction yet but it also could have been way better and they could have Maybe just thought of a better idea yeah. of what to do than this, like, ritualistic, like, Rosemary Baby-esque, like, weird storyline that they went with. But, I mean... Mm-hmm. And like I said, it's, it's like... And, well, obviously... And I, I just... I do want to talk about Jamie for a second just because... I mean, we did talk about Danielle Harris and her yeah. not being in it. And, but, like, I really didn't get... It's, it's like... I always got to use Resident Evil references just because we talk about Resident Evil on this channel all the time anyway. So it was like... When, when Daniel Harris wasn't Jamie, it's literally like Alice and Court not being Claire. And I know you and I talked about that earlier because it just felt like it wasn't even the yeah. same character. I didn't even get the vibe that it was her. Not that the actress was a bad actress. I, I'm not saying that at all. But it just didn't seem like that was Jamie at all to me. No, I mean, I feel like they could have done a better job because I told you that like, like Daniel Harris found out really she their trying to cast somebody who looks like me. And if they weren't such shitheads, they could have at least reached out to her and said, okay, how can we make this work? Yeah. They just didn't see the importance in her in the series at all, which is another thing that rubbed me the wrong way, because I feel like there's a lot of fans that are like that. You know, everyone loves Lumina. I mean, people lose their shit over Lori. Yeah. Daniel Harris, Jamie. I mean... There's tons of Halloween fans that love her, but, like, she does not get the credit that she deserves. And, yeah. You know. Which makes it even worse, yeah. Ruined the character like that. Like I said before, she's probably my, my favorite character in the series, next to Loomis. And, yeah. And, again, maybe that's just because when I saw 4 and 5, I was, like, the same age. And it's like, oh, there's a kid that's the lead in this movie. That's kind of cool. So yeah. I, like, connected in that way. Oh, that's but then cute. for her to just be completely, <laughs> yeah, for her to be ruined yeah, um, in a similar way that Rachel was, it's just like, that's really true. you don't understand how important these characters, how, the people who made those decisions did not understand how important, how popular those characters were. And it's, it really sucks. I feel like, like again, like you, you said, you know, having Loomis in the movie helped a lot for this one. Like, he was for sure the best part. Yeah. And if they had just had Danielle as Jamie and give her a better ending and better things to do, that would have been another great part of the movie, even with all that other stuff. Yeah, so, it would have worked better Shame and it would have... Yeah. Made the movie had no idea what to do. Yeah. And even the ridiculous, weird direction the story went in, it may have been... It always takes the right actor to make things better, so I feel like maybe if Daniel Harris was in it and they still decided to go with this bizarre storyline, maybe it would have worked better just because she was part of it and it could have been more, I, mean, I, I don't know, s- believable. Yeah. <laughs> I said that, yeah, I said that um, in the beginning of the movie to you when, you know, Michael was chasing her in that truck and she was getting rammed and whatever and she was all scared and you're, you're like, or when oh, she yeah. was calling Dr. L- the radio station, you yeah. know, it... That was Danielle. You would have been like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. He just needs to get to her. He needs to help her. He needs to save her. You'd be really concerned. Sort of similarly to, I mean, the first time we watched Halloween Four, you liked Rachel immediately, and you said, "Oh god, she better not get killed." So it's like yeah, yeah. you'd care more even in things like that. Like you said, the right actor. If if Danielle Harris's Jamie was in that danger, I think you'd be on edge, and it wouldn't be just like, "Oh, that's supposed to be Jamie." I mean, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, and it's really, it's a good comparison to say it's just like the Claire, the Allison Court, Claire Redfield situation because, and it's, because it's sad that Daniel Harris was literally treated like Mm -hmm. shit the same way Allison was. It was like, you know, we're going to bring you in, but this is what we're going to do and we're not going to pay you what you deserve. And it's, it's like eerily familiar situation. And I just don't, I don't understand how companies like that like Capcom and like this movie company don't realize like characters are the core and the essential thing and the right actor or voice actor like just helps so much I don't understand why there's not a lot of emphasis on that and why it's just like it's just like a selfish greedy company big corporation thing well we get you're so like everybody's replaceable to them like oh you don't want to do this well then fine we'll get somebody that will it's just like that mindset is so annoying because no, to the fans, like, not everybody can yeah. be Jamie. Like, only Daniel Harris can be. And not everybody yeah. can be Loomis. Only Donald Pleasant. Like, there's certain 
like I said, certain actors that just play certain roles perfectly and nobody else should be in them. And I did feel like even though Danielle Harris was so young, like she, that that's another thing that she was so young when she did it that she kind of set the mark for that character and she should have been able to grow with her. And it's a shame that they were just like, wow, we're just going to be assholes. I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there was the producers from the Halloween side that had done the previous movies. I think they were fighting for her to come back. But then you had the assholes at Dimension who had no in, no care for it at all. Like, they didn't care that she was in other movies. They didn't give a shit. And I will say, I always joke about it, and I know how, lo- how much you love Disney movies, but I always joke about it like that Halloween 6 was a Dimension movie, which is which is owned by oh, Max yeah, or was at the top, and owned yeah. by Disney. And I'm always like, yeah, that oh, is fucking true. Disney? They, f- <laughs> they fucked over Daniel Harris, and they fucked up this series. <laughs> It's so weird to, like, it's watch that and be like, oh, Disney. <laughs> yeah, I know, a Disney movie, Michael Myers' Disney movie, <laughs> technically. <laughs> technically, yes, that's weird. Oh, my gosh. But I guess, like, but uh, I don't know if there was any other specific points I wanted to make, but if you have any questions for me or uh, if you just want to do, like, the overall thing, I can tell you my overall thoughts. Yeah. I guess I already sort of did, but if, you know, you have anything else you want to know, just... I mean... I mean, there was some cool references that we talked about. The guy who wrote it was a big horror fan with, with Danny and, you know, John and Oh, Deborah. yeah. Those were, those were nice references and things and like I that. And I swear so there was, was a Cujo kind of reference. Cool. If you were more familiar with the movie Cujo, you probably would see that. Like when she oh, said yeah. those, when, the, those yeah, words she, in the beginning, it was like, it was like a poem yeah. or something to try to, like, not make him scared. Like, there's such – there's a big, huge thing in Cujo about that. They're called, like, the monster words, and the dad says them every night so the little boy can, like, go to sleep and not be scared and – so I really do feel like that was – because he seems like a Stephen – I mean, if yeah. he's a horror fan, he's probably a Stephen King fan. And if you name the character uh, Danny after Danny Torrance, I'm sure he's a Stephen King fan. So so that was pretty cool, yeah. like the little references. Um, I mean, and the music was good. At least I know you said in, in the theatrical it's not. But in the producer's cut, it was really like good. Like the electrical talk, yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, there was just like one other – like with the whole beginning hour being really good, I did – I do actually really like the whole – when you heard the, like the deep voices talking to Danny, oh, yeah. talking in his head. I like that because it was like, what is that? I like that it was creepy and dark. Again, the explanation yeah. later was kind of stupid, but I even like retroactively thinking that Michael was hearing those voices in his head because the voice was great. I like that. I like that dark, foreboding yeah. kind of stuff. The execution yeah. was not that good, but. I liked that at the beginning when he was hearing the voices and stuff, and the voices made him pull the knife on his uh, grandfather, I guess. Yeah, and it could have worked in the Halloween way if they had been like, okay, Michael heard the same voices. Like, it could have been, if it was just more of a spiritual thing that he's hearing in his head and a supernatural thing versus just this, like, well, I guess it is supernatural, uh-huh. but you know what I mean? Like, then it the, just being this, like, yeah, symbol yeah. for this cult and, like, this whole weird... And, and, the, and even the guy... Um, God, I don't remember his name, the character name, but um, the doctor guy, like like Loomis's friend, like from the one that was supposed to be Wait. the doctor from years and years ago. Yeah, him being like the main guy. I know they were trying to make it like twisty, and they didn't really know. Again, uh-huh. I don't fully blame the people who made six because five kind of left it off on that weird fucking, you know, <laughs> like yeah. they didn't know what to do. But like making it that guy, I also felt was really cliche and like just trying to be like a twist, but it was just weird because why would he, uh-huh. after being a serious doctor for you? Because if he's supposed to be the guy from the first movie that's talking to Loomis, which you told me he he yeah. is supposed to be, why would he? That's be... cool. Like, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Like, why would he be doing that? That seems weird. Yeah. But I mean, there is kind of a cool like sort of if you step backwards kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, in the original movie when Loomis said to him or he said to Loomis he doesn't even know how to drive and Loomis said oh he's doing well last night and that was just yeah. the old throwaway line but then people think oh well maybe he taught Michael how to drive based on six and stuff like that oh yeah I, guess, I mean I guess if I go back to the first one after watching all these sequels and I can sort of connect certain things but, I mean, you and should, be like yeah. oh they can be believable but to me it's just like the first one's sort of like a standalone thing it's like okay that guy was a normal doctor guy he's just talking to Loomis like yeah. I just don't see it as it's just kind of outrageous oh, making yeah. like this cult leader and he's like it's just weird when he's just uh-huh. like this normal guy <laughs> but yeah. I don't know yeah. that was just really weird but uh yeah I know but I know I guess if we were I don't think I really had any other questions. I think 
I think... It was cool Tommy came back. Did we talk about that? I just thought it was cool because, like, oh, yeah. it was at least somebody from yeah. the cast. Maybe, you, maybe we did briefly talk about it. It would have been so cool if they had been able to get the same actor. I know you said they wanted to reach out, but he didn't have an agent at the yeah. time. Maybe he wasn't acting so they, anymore. Yeah, they couldn't find him. Yeah. That would have been really cool. Yeah, but. that was pretty cool. And having him, like... Like, cause they, some character in the movie said, like, something happened to him when was, he was eight and it, like, messed him up. Um, so having him still be obsessed with Michael, and that was an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, but, but, um, but no, I guess I don't think I have any more questions. Um, although, how satisfying was it to see Michael kill the asshole dad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's always at least one or two satisfying kills in every, like, slasher movie, and there has been at least in every Halloween so far. So, yeah, that was definitely, like, yay, because he was such a douche for, like, yeah. no reason. <laughs> and remember I said it was but, really um, cool no. and unique that it wasn't, like, a teenager asshole character. Normally yeah. in a slasher movie, it was just, like, this grumpy, like, alcoholic dad character <laughs> that was just an asshole in every way and just got what he deserved. It was pretty good, yeah. so. But then his poor yeah, wife like... died. She was sweet. <laughs> Yeah, and she lost her gla- I said that we were watching it. She lost her glasses like Velma. And like, oh, I can't <laughs> see without my glasses. Kind of sad. I know, poor lady, because she was a And Michael, I think we said Michael was nice enough to put their sh- the bloody sheets in their dryer, in their washer, and try to wash them or whatever oh he my was God, doing. That was actually- Maybe he was just trying to hide them or something. <laughs> but- when you pointed that out and said that, I literally, like, was dying, because it's like, why would he do that? <laughs> well, Michael, you're very polite. After you murder everybody, you just. You put the bloody sheets in the washer. It was so funny. Because <laughs> at first I thought he was going to open it and, like, her head was going to be there or something. Like, I expected, like, a body yeah. part or something. But it was just the sheet, uh-huh. which was uh-huh. pretty subtle. And I, I liked that they didn't go overboard with, like, a head be Like, I feel like, again, that would be something that might happen today. It'd be more grotesque or whatever. Yeah. But that's why I really did like the beginning. The beginning fooled me. The pacing was great. Everything was very reminiscent to the, the vibe of the, like, original movie which is what it's supposed to be it did follow along with that and like seeing michael in the background and all the little eerie moments it just the ending really like just sort of fucked it up for me personally i guess like made it just like oh wow this is not a halloween movie like for the first Mm -hmm. time in any of the sequels i got this weird vibe that it just wasn't a halloween movie at least at the end yeah before you know after all uh, the, the whole first hour yeah yeah um and uh, before we do go into our final thoughts on it, um, I always feel like, I kind of feel bad for, I mean, I guess I don't feel bad for Halloween 5 for getting lumped in like that, because those mm-hmm. people threw in that random shit. But as divisive as Halloween four, uh, 6 is, and how beloved Halloween 4 is, mm-hmm. Halloween 4, 5, and 6 are like today collectively referred to as the Thorn Trilogy. Oh, interesting. Like, I think the, <laughs> yeah, but, like, Halloween 4 really has nothing to do with that, other than the fact that yeah. it's connected to 5 and that stuff. So it's kind of like, don't lump in 4 with this stuff that uh, most people hate. It's true. Kinda, That's true. Of that movie because it's so good. Don't. I guess that's where it is now. I, I wonder um, what the people that made five were really thinking, though, with this whole cult. Well, I, they obviously, I don't know if they meant for it to be a cult, but with, with their initial thought with, like, the man in black hole thing, like, where were they going with it? Yeah. Because it took such a weird turn in six, but I wonder if they were originally planning for I, it to be that I weird. Think, it's weird. <laughs> I think I actually have answers to that from commentary and documentaries I've watched. Remember when we were watching, like, so the tattoo first, the thorn tattoo, which I do mm-hmm. have. But, um, oh, yeah. That first. Remember when we were watching Five, I told you that originally the old hermit man and at the beginning was supposed to be a young 20-something dude, and they changed to an old guy, so you would care more when he gets killed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the actor who played Michael in Five has said that when it was the young 20-something dude... That there was a lot of stuff they shot with that character where, like, he was performing some weird rituals on him and gave him the tattoo, I guess, to bring him back to life. And that's all stupid shit they got out. So that's where the tattoo came from, and they were just stuck with it. Um, oh, wow. And then the Man in Black stuff was kind of silly and stupid. I've heard a bunch of times them say that there was just somebody who showed up on set because they were shooting in, like, a city, a town. Um, and somebody who showed up on set dressed like that. 
and the director was like, oh, he looks cool. Let's uh, throw that, kind uh, of randomly throw a character like that in the movie and not explain it at all. So that, that's where those things came from out of nowhere, pretty much. And then the people who made Six were stuck with it. Yeah, well, that's... I mean, it's nice that they allowed, like, someone to influence their movie like that, but, like, that's really... I mean... They should have just stuck to the, like, Halloween material. I don't know. I just, when I watch, like, now when I go back and watch the first movie, it's going to be so weird because I've always watched that as, like, a standalone movie because, again, I never really saw any of the sequels or yeah. anything. So, yeah. but the I think the farther we get away from the original, the less it's going to feel like the original. I mean, this one, like I said, it's really weird how this movie was because the first hour, I would say, was really, really good. And then the last, you know, when did it get start getting weird? Maybe like the last twenty minutes of it were like, what the fuck? Maybe the last half hour uh-huh. when all the shit started to come out and the twists and all that, and I was just like, uh. and then that old lady being part of it, the cult too, like randomly, like the one that babysat Michael and you know when he was a kid apparently and then was talking to Danny. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was just like you guys are tr- like pushing it too far now for like these twists and and I again don't fully blame like the people that made six because they were sort of stuck with this weird cliffhanger thing that's the fifth movie left off on but i really was expecting something kind of cool and and more explained and not so fucking like cliche and strange i guess i don't know it's like cliche Uh yeah but like not for that type of movie if that makes sense like it's a cliche movie trope to have like i'm the bad guy and like we're in a cult and but like for halloween i never saw that type of like cliche story story coming into play it's really weird i expected something Uh totally i really don't know what i expected but i did not expect something that fucking weird and out of place and i don't really like ritualistic movies like that and that type of like that's not like my type of horror although i do love rosemary's baby I, i don't i don't know why i just grew up with that movie i've always loved it it's a classic but other than that, like, I don't really like yeah. those type of movies. And I love The Exorcist. I don't know if that really counts because that's more Exorcist, whatever. But I don't know. Cult movies and stuff I've never really been into. So for them to bring it into a horror movie I really, really love was, like, really – and to, for them to sort of mesh it with, like, a slasher movie, too, it's just like, oh, this is really weird. <laughs> Even though I do think Halloween and <laughs> the whole thing with Michael Myers has always been more than a slasher movie, but it just felt really – pushing in this one for it to be something more i guess i don't know yeah maybe they were just really desperate they didn't know what to do yeah yeah (laughs) yeah but i think that's that's pretty good for like final thoughts on it um yeah like for me like i said um i don't don't know if you'd call it nostalgia because i only saw it like three, four years ago, when it, like, well, when right. the bootleg was out was a while ago, so I, like I said, I had that weird feeling toward it, because it was, oh, this is a new, kind of classic Halloween film. Yeah, and it had Loomis in it still, and it had, yeah, that's true, yeah. And, like, the references, and the, some of the characters yeah. returning again, not the actors. I mean, I, I may have appreciated like, it more if I saw um, it after the Rob Zombie one. Like, if we weren't watching them in order and just say I caught the Rob yeah. Zombie one on TV and I saw that, I probably would feel the same way and appreciate, like, if I watched them out of order, maybe appreciate other ones a little bit more. But from seeing them in order and seeing yeah. really good, solid ones and then going to that one, like, for me, it's just meh. But, like, I can I can totally see, like, where you're coming from with it. Like, I, I've had experiences <laughs> like that with movies, so I get it. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, um, but I guess I'll ask you, like I do with every, all the movies, for me, I think it's, I think it's pretty decent, the ending is what it is, but I think the beginning sort of brings it up a little bit, because you're expecting something maybe a little cooler, maybe something less cliche, but. So far, so far you've liked all the sequels. You've said they were good. So <laughs> as your sort of last word on this one, is yeah. it good? Is it bad? Is it okay? Your opinion? Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't say... <laughs> I wouldn't say it's good, but I also wouldn't say it's bad. Yeah. I guess I would just say it's sort of... It is, but I guess, you okay. Said like, meh. Yeah, meh, yeah. You said meh. Yeah, meh. That's my word. Because I don't want to just say, okay, I feel like I should give more of a description than just, oh, it's okay, or it's all right. But, like, 
I kind of just feel like sort of like that towards it. Not that I'm indifferent because it was interesting and, and I, I want to, you know, I have thoughts and opinions on it, obviously. So it's not like, oh, I, I don't really care either way. But I don't really lean towards more one than the other. It's not like it was I lean more towards, oh, it was bad or I lean more towards it was good. It was just kind of like it's kind of like a balance of them. I definitely think. Yeah. The, fifth one was better like i like uh, and then obviously the fourth one is better than both of them so it's yeah yeah. so four for me almost stands almost not quite and the original is in a league of its own but four i enjoy probably almost as much as the original yeah the fourth one was the only sequel i can say for that I mean, technically, to me, the first three were really solid, and when I say three, I mean one, two, and four, because obviously three has nothing to do with it, and we haven't even watched that yeah, one yet. Yeah, that season of Witch. Yeah. So, for me, I feel like the first three are really solid. Five was pretty good on its own as well, and then this one was just... This one's like a step... Maybe a couple steps down from five, because I do... So, maybe I do lean more towards it was kind of bad, but I don't want to say that, because I don't... Yeah. Again, it's not something uh-huh. I would never watch again, or wouldn't be like... You know, if I wanted to have a Halloween marathon with like my boyfriend or just somebody that wanted to actually sit down and watch them all i'd be like okay you know it's this one's not too bad but you know don't expect to i would just i guess how i would forewarn somebody is like don't expect too much from this one and you kind of did tell me that and so when it first started you said all right i'm not saying too much but you're not gonna like certain things in this and i was like okay so sort of bracing myself and i feel like again just i always have to give a shout out that donald pleasance saves it a lot for me because i just love him so much and i love the character so much and i feel like if he wasn't in it this would be like this would be bad to me. This would be on the bad spectrum more than the good if he wasn't in it. But no, I, mean, it, I yeah, I sure agree. Yes, yes. And that's why I'm no Daniel to see the theatrical one. Peasants. Oh yeah, then it would. Just I be know we still have that. We still have that. We yeah. We will talk about that once. Um, yeah, we'll add it in for, somewhere. <laughs> you don't like? I mean. You're iffy on this one? Yeah, you're, if you're iffy on the producer's cut, oh boy, I can't. Yeah, and you said that Donald Pleasance, like, wasn't in the theatrical it's version a lot, and, he, and he's in, yeah, and he's, but he's in the producer's version more, and I feel like even the producer's cut, he wasn't, to me, was it didn't feel like he was really in it that much, as he was in, like, 4 and 5, like, he was a big presence in 4 and 5, I felt like, and then in, in this uh, one, he just kind uh, of felt like, I mean, he made good strong appearances and especially towards the end you know when things get really bad he usually does show up and everything but i don't know i felt like it was more focused on like the newer characters like the strode family or whatever i don't know it didn't seem as equal divided with him to me anyway so like it's going to be weird to see even less of him in the theatrical version i don't i don't like that but but yeah i am interested to see it just to see the differences and just to piss me off more i guess (laughs) so you can uh, well, well, I know I know you and the kind of things you like, the kind of things you don't like. <laughs> That's true. And I guess for uh, one last final thought before we like, I just want to say, and again, everybody's gonna hate me and say I, you know, I'm going on and on about this, and I don't care though. I have to say, fucking. Donald Pleasant's so fucking adorable in this with his little gray beard and his soft little voice because he was older. <laughs> and he's, oh my God, you could just tell like he was obviously more fragile. He doesn't look sick or anything. Like I wouldn't have been able to tell like he died like shortly after because he doesn't seem sick. He just seems more fragile. And I think it just adds to his character even more being so lovable. And he's just like a big teddy bear. And he reminds me of my dad. I kept saying that to you <laughs> throughout because like my dad has like a big gray beard and my dad's more, I guess, biker looking. If you like saw a picture of him, you probably would think that he's got like long hair. But if he didn't have the long hair, I feel like he has like the soft, adorable Loomis face. And it maybe makes me love Loomis more more because he reminds me of that i don't know but he's just so sweet and he's such a good like father character i guess even though he's not technically a father of any of the characters but you know what i mean like he's like the protector character and he's so good and yeah he needs well let's let's end it on that (laughs) you know we got a lot of pretty good movies with him before that's true. We sadly have made it to the end of the Loomis Donald Pleasance era of Halloweens. I know, and that's 
depressing. I think, I, I think, I don't know if I said it when the recorder was on or if I said it to you earlier, so I'm just going to say it again. Even though I know Jamie Lee Curtis is going to return to the series, I just don't think it's going to be, and she's great, don't get me wrong, and I'm not trying to downplay the Lori character at all, but I just, for me personally, I just don't think it's going to be the same without him. Like, he really does make the movies what they are and give them that unique touch that no other slasher movies really have. Even the new one that's coming out, like, how are they going to make that one feel unique like the first one did if they don't really have a character like that? Unless they try to bring somebody else in to sort of replace him, which would be awful, too. Like, you can't do that. So, (sighs) I don't know. Just... He was great. At least he, and at least he did really good movies, and he was known for something really big before he passed away. I always like to say that. <laughs> that he's like a legend at this point, especially in the horror world. So, rest in peace, Donald Pleasance. You're the best. You'll always be Dr. Loomis. 